And as we mark Chernobyl's anniversary, many say that the world has failed to learn the lessons on nuclear safety that the tragedy provided. Well, I'm now joined by Professor Christopher Busby, he's Scientific Secretary of the European Committee on Radiation Risks, for a little more insight into the, uh, this century's most serious nuclear crisis there in Japan. Professor Busby, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Well, there have been reports, well, not widely uh, covered by the media, that one of the explosions at Fukushima was not actually a gas blast, as originally thought, but a nuclear reaction in one of the reactor vessels. Now, surely, if that was the case, the plant's operator, TEPCO, they wouldn't conceal such a, a catastrophic development, would they? I think it's possible that they would conceal this development. Um, the, the nuclear industry, industry ha, ha, has a history of, of, uh, of duplicity and cover-up. Um, wherever you look, they, 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 will, they will always try and shift, shift the information in some way that makes them come out on top. I, I believe actually it probably was a nuclear explosion, but not in the reactor, but in the, um, the tanks that contain the spent fuel. I think that seems to be almost certain now, that there was some kind of, um, there's some kind of nuclear explosion in that tank the one that contained the plutonium uh, MOX fuel rods. Uh, I mean, anyone who saw that on the, on, the, on the video and saw that enormous explosion wouldn't have believed that it was a hydrogen explosion. What would the consequences be if that is the case, that it was indeed a nuclear explosion, not hydrogen? Well, uh, not a lot different, actually. Um, the, 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 pro the problem is that the fuel rods, enormous number of radioactive fuel rods, have been blasted into the air and have vaporized. So there's a great deal of radioactivity around there. And also there has been a meltdown. And, and uh, as we understand it, there is still fissioning taking place, maybe there, but also maybe as a result of cracks in the, in the vessels themselves. So we've got fissioning taking place in those reactors. And I believe there's about 10 to the 14. That's 1 and 14 zero of becquerels of radioactivity coming out every day now. This is a very serious matter. I have to say that, the, that there is evidence that the, um, that the, the Chernobyl nuclear reactor was also uh, a nuclear explosion. The, the Chernobyl accident was a nuclear explosion. We, we uh, heard details a couple of weeks ago in Berlin of isotopic uh, measurements that were made of xenon isotopes that showed that it was a nuclear explosion and not a hydrogen explosion. So that also was a nuclear explosion. Well, well many analysts have said there isn't much of a comparison between the two between Chernobyl and Fukushima. You indeed have actually said uh, Fukushima could be a lot worse than Chernobyl. Looking at the situation now, w would you still stand by that, that this situation yes, has yes, not been resolved and yeah. it could be a lot worse? I, I think it could be a lot worse. And the reason that it could be a lot worse is because it has, it, it's much less under control than Chernobyl was. I, I have to say that the, the Soviet uh, system moved very fast to try and contain what was happening at Chernobyl. And that the Japanese have been very, very lax in the, in, in the way in which they took people out of exclusion zone. And they still haven't uh, emptied enough people out of an exclusion zone, which should, uh, as far as I'm concerned, go out at least 60 or 70 kilometers. They're measuring enormous amounts of radioactivity on the ground out to 70 kilometers report this um, so so th and these are amounts that are higher than the amounts in the Chernobyl exclusion zone and we have increases in radioactivity near Tokyo or south of Tokyo so the difference really is that there's a very very much larger population at risk in Japan than there was in Chernobyl luckily the Chernobyl radiation went north and didn't go south to Kiev so the population that was exposed was not as great but I have to say in the calculations that we've made the the, the cancer deaths um, from Chernobyl have been in the region of about about 1 million, uh, 1 million 400,000 we calculated at this conference in Berlin using the ECRR risk model. And we're expecting uh, approximately the same, uh, probably uh, as a result of Fukushima, but, but certainly if people aren't it, evacuated. Sorry to interrupt, why is it when I read uh, independent analysts uh, on other uh, news websites saying that the long-term health damage is, is not yet known, but the risks to human health are thought to be low. And indeed, um, no deaths so far have been reported as a result of radiation con contamination there in Fukushima. Is this because it's all too early to tell or are you perhaps overreacting and exaggerating what the situation could be that some people might say no, it's not it's not because it's too early to tell i mean as far as far as uh, as far as chernobyl is concerned we already know the, me the epidemiological measurements have been done there have been plenty of studies done that show increases in cancer and uh, an, an enormous range of ill health following chernobyl and i have to say that people who uh, ignore history are doomed to repeat it as far as far as the people who are talking this down are concerned they are generally people connected to the nuclear industry and there's an awful lot of money i have to say you know running running on whether this is the case or not 
Scott. Just briefly, um, the Japanese authorities are confident that they'll be able to sort all this out within the next nine months, cool the reactors, stop the leaking of the radiation. Do you believe that putting this cover over and sorting this problem out could actually be achieved in nine months' time and would be the end of a potential catastrophe? I'm sorry, I had some trouble with the earplug. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, I think um, I, I, I've just lost you there for a second. Just, just briefly, are you confident, or perhaps not as confident as the Japanese authorities are saying, that this could all be resolved by putting this um, protective cover over the, uh, the plant and indeed that the, the reactors will be cooled down and the leaking will stop within nine months from now? Is that realistic? I think it's unlikely. I think it's unlikely. If you put a protective cover over, this, uh, over a reactor which is still fissioning, then the fission products will just go into the ground and they'll be washed out into the sea and they will still come out. You can't seal a fissioning reactor with, by putting concrete on it. It's just, just not possible. And just finally, briefly, you mentioned washed out to sea. Chernobyl on land, there's Fukushima right on the Pacific Ocean coast. How significant is that in terms of radiation uh, contamination on a much wider field away from Japan? Just briefly. Well, 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 we're already picking up material in, in the United States and concentrations of, uh, of uranium and plutonium are being picked up in Hawaii and, and in the Marianas Islands in air filters and also the stuff that's contaminating the sea will go all along the coast. It's a, it's a very, very serious situation and it's being talked down, as I say, by the nuclear industry and by the Japanese authorities. And, and in my opinion, this is a very serious matter because people are going to get sick and die as a result of this. Professor Christopher Busby, very interesting to talk to you. Thanks for your time. Thanks for joining us there live in London. Okay.